Welcome to a Friday Reads, where I talk about what I read, what I'm reading, what I hope to get to next, little life updates. I don't know. If you've been here, you know what I do on Fridays. This has been a hard week. It's, it's been a hard week. I, I still want to film this. I don't know if I have a whole lot to say. I do have some interesting plans for a video I'm kind of excited about next week, if I can get my brain together. But um, if you're not in my Discord, I'm going to start with some sad news. Um, I'm gonna try not to be a mess, but one of my old cats, um, Putao, is very sick, and he probably doesn't have that much longer, and I found that out last Saturday, and it was very fun. It was a very fun day. So, that is all to say, reading has been very hard. I've been keeping things together, but the focus required for reading is, uh, fleeting, to say the least. Um, but I am excited about reading. I have things I want to talk about. I have finished a really good book. Um, I've continued a book that I started back in January, so we're, we're gonna get into that. We'll talk about what I might do for the last week of the month. I have some tentative plans, but everything is very fluxy as per usual. So yeah, that's where my brain's at. I am, you know, <laughs> if you've been with me the past year, it's like, is, is the world done yet? Is the world done yet? Can I just breathe for a month? For a month. <laughs> and the answer is no, life is not fair, but we have books. We have books. So let's get into it with, I think, the first thing I finished since last time we checked. And that would be the unnecessary imposition, or the, the imposition of unnecessary obstacles. I don't know, the second Malka Oldberg. And I'm not gonna talk about it too much here because I have this video idea because I've been trying to figure out how to handle my recent release roundup idea because I like it a lot, but it's a lot of work and I don't have enough time. And so what I kind of decided I might try and do, we'll see if I have fun doing it because that's going to be the deciding factor, is, you know, planning to read some new releases that I am interested in. And then after I read them, looking at other reviews and then compiling a video of both my reviews on X, like a couple books, and also the reviews of other people who have read it so far. And I think I'm going to do that with this Malka Oldebrook and another novella that came out this year, um, What Feasts at Night, which I have not read yet. <laughs> So that's something I'm thinking of picking up, especially because T. King Fisher typically is a good comfort read for me. Searching for comfort. It's also short. Um, when we get to my wrap up at the end of this month, it feels like all I can do is read really long things or really short things. There's just no in between this month and that's okay. <laughs> that seems to be where the momentum has been in my reading is like to help me get through the long things. I've had a lot of short things to give me the serotonin of like, I finished the thing. So it also works with the theme of the month of the month where I've read the most novellas in a very long time. So I finished it. It's, both of these will be also second books in their respective series and things like that. And I like pairing the Malka Older series with the T. King Fisher because I know the T. King Fisher is so much more popular than the Malka Older. So hopefully that spotlights that series. And then I get a chance to, you know, spotlight some people who do book reviews. And because that's always been one of my favorite things about the recent release roundup is like, I get a lot of people who just do YouTube just to make book reviews, which never do well algorithmically, and I get to like highlight them. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hold my thoughts on this for next week's video. Um, and if that video doesn't happen, you'll definitely get my thoughts and my wrap up soon, <laughs> largely saying I had a good time with it. Um, I definitely have things that personally I had issues with, but it definitely worked for me. It would have probably worked way better if there was an audiobook, but there is not, alas, which is such a shame because the audio narrator for the first book was amazing. But the thing we can talk about that I finished last week is The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. And I think I talked about last week how I really love the audio narrator, but I hesitate recommend reading this as an audiobook because Jem Jemisin loves unique narrative framing, okay? That's just like a thing she does. And in this one, um, it's very jarring because the narrator voice will interrupt herself, change paths quickly, sometimes talks to herself. It's, it's very jarring. So without the visual cues, it can be tricky. Otherwise, it's a pretty straightforward fantasy with just new names of nations and places. So sometimes that's just easier to physically read for a lot of people anyways. But if you can immersion read or if it's a reread, the narrator's voices for these characters are so good. I was so nervous to read this because it wasn't Robin Miles, who is normally the narrator for most N.K. Jemisin things, and we know that I love Robin Miles with all my heart. This narrator did a fantastic job. There is a very hateable character in this. So what happens is Yena 
goes to this place because her grandfather calls her. Her mother was estranged, basically kicked out of the family, and he pronounces her heir. And there's this heir competition for the throne. And one of the cousins she's competing against is pretty much like Azula's the blueprint for this character and the audio narrator understood the assignment, okay? And I'm talking about Azula from La Avatar The Last Airbender. I have not seen the show yet. As of me filming this, the show is live and I haven't gotten a good consensus if people like it or not. I have a hard time connecting with live action versions of animated things because I almost always think the animated thing is better. I don't know, maybe that's a hot take. Regardless, back to this. <laughs> really love the audio narrator and I think I'm just so excited to redo my series review for these books. I think I was wearing this sweater <laughs> when I last reviewed the entire series because I think I have a better idea on reread about what its project is. Um, it definitely has a lot to do with birth and new beginnings and pivotal moments of change. But yeah, I really like this. I really like the ending because there is an antagonist in this book. And part of what happens at the end of it is we need to decide how will we punish this antagonistic thing. And I really like how that's talked about and discussed because it's in direct contrast with how we typically handle that. And I just, I always say this in sci-fi and fantasy, I love when we think about what we could be doing and don't hold ourselves rigidly to the structure of our actual world to a point of like, well, this is what we would do like here. So yeah, um, I know it's not for everyone. It definitely has some uncomfy moments, but also if you like dark fae, this has a lot of things that I associate with dark fae stories in terms of these creatures that are immortal, that you can't trust, that are always twisting your words, that have to answer to you, but they don't have to do it by the letter of what you say. They can twist things around. Like it has a lot of that. Um, they're the main like sort of love interest character is so complex. Like in terms of do you like her? Do you not like her? And like, that's the point. Like he's the God of chaos and darkness. Um, and it's, it's really awesome. I really enjoy it. Totally get why it's not for everyone, but the reread was spectacular and it was just nice. It was just such an easy audiobook to fall into and like I physical reading time has been sparse and focus has been sparse, so to have a good audiobook time was absolutely lovely. So, what am I currently reading right now? Um the big one is I jumped back in <laughs> for better or worse, Reaper's Gale, <laughs> which is uh, some book in Malaz and I think book 7. And because Roger is getting to it and Roger is like a beast. He can just like plow through these Malazan books. So I read book 1 and a half like in January and he's already surpassed me within 2 days. Like he picked it up and in 2 days finished the first two books of Malazan and I'm just like I I cannot. But I have read a couple chapters. <laughs> And like, this is definitely a thing that's just very exhausting about the series. Like there's just a large part of me that just wants to start over when I have the brain power and just reread Malazan from the beginning and just power through because it's like, I both can't read it fast because I get exhausted, but I also can't read it so slow that I forget about the side thing that was referenced in another place, but is only being referred to by this small context clues. And my brain's just not big enough. Like I'm pretty good at connecting things, but in this series, it's so many threads and it's really hard for me to catch them all. And it's hard for me to at least catch a few and just throw out the ones that I can't keep track of. Like this is reminding me a lot of my experience reading House of Chains, which is book four. And that was really exhausting for me and confusing. And a book I knew would be better on reread when I had finally found context. And it's really frustrating because it's reminding me of when I was reading Wheel of Time, where it's like there's moments where I love reading the book. And then we pivot to a new scene and I'm confused. And I don't know where I am and I don't know why I'm here and I don't know who I'm with. And it's like, was I told this or am I meant to be confused? And I think that's the issue. I don't mind being confused if I know I'm supposed to be. Which earlier in Malazan, it's like, yeah, of course I'm supposed to be confused. This is book one and I know I haven't been told anything. But because I've read so many pages, it's like, wait, should I know who this is? Did I just forget? And that bothers me. Maybe it shouldn't, but it bothers me that maybe I was told a thing but I have forgotten. And so now I'm having a lesser experience reading a section because I don't know <laughs> if I should be confused or not. It's so, it's so interesting. It's not a bad time, but it's definitely a frustrating time. And um, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I need to figure it out. I think by the end of Reaper's Gale is going to decide if I start over with Malazan when I eventually have the spoons, because maybe trying to finish Malazan and rereading Stormlight in the same year is just like, that's too many big books. Maybe that's just how it is, especially with teaching and everything like that. So maybe that's a like 2025 project. I have no clue. Um, 
So I think it'll depend on how the rest of Reaper's Gales goes, how I handle that series, because I do want to finish it. I just don't think I'm having the best experience right now, and I think that's because I took a year and a half off. So maybe I just need to start over. And especially since I've already read it, I can easily just like reread with the audiobooks and things like that. Although the audio narrator is only okay for me. I know for some people it's just like, oh, he's the best. And I'm just like, mm, he's okay. He's okay. <laughs> it's not awful. <laughs> it's just, it's fine. He just like, he has like four voices and most of them annoy me. <laughs> so um, in terms of other plans, I already t mentioned What Feasts the Dead. Or What Feasts at Night, not it's What Moves the Dead is the first book. What Feasts at Night. Um, I have the ebook, so I can read that. And if it doesn't work in my head, I did use the audiobook for book one. So I'm used to this narrator for this, um, the voice of our main character here. Um, so I'm excited to get into that. It's going to be, you know, standalone kind of spooky story. That might be a good little escape. Another potential escape, and this is a new book to the TBR, so it would help with my, you know, touch a book off your TBR and see if you'd like it sort of thing. And that is Bride. <laughs> Hallie Hazelwood. Um, I made the mistake of mentioning last week that I really want to read Bride and I don't have it and maybe I should just buy it. And then the next day this was on my doorstep because Evie is the best. And Evie didn't know that I was going to get bad news about my cat on Saturday when she sent this. But this might be the ideal escape scenario for me. Um, if you don't know, I love escaping in romance books. And Allie Hazelwood writes great contemporary romance for me, even though her stem I need her to be out of STEM, which is why this is exciting to me. This is just paranormal romance with your classic werewolves and vampires and they hate each other and I'm sure smell's gonna be way more important than it needs to be and like, ah. Yeah, and like Allie Hazelwood, just her writing is easy and it flows in my brain. So I'm hoping this weekend, if I just really need to escape and I have no motivation, I can just pick this up and just consume it within 48 hours and have a good time. So that's, that's a potential and I don't think it's going to happen. But especially just because I want to be in a good headspace. Like I literally haven't picked this up since the last time I read the first chapter. And it's not because I don't want to. It's just because physical reading time does not exist right now. <laughs> At least not unless I have an audiobook to go with it. And there's no audiobook for this, which is a shame because I think it'd be amazing on audiobook. So like, what are we doing, Tor? I mean, yeah, I don't know. So this might be pushed to another month, but I did read the first chapter enough to know that like, yes, I want to read this one day. So this, you know, this is not a DNF, it's barely even a pause. If you read like 20 books, pages of a book, is that even anything? It's just a taste test. That's just like what I do at a bookstore when I decide if I want to buy a book or not. <laughs> so that that's, you know, what's happening here. So those are kind of the reading plans, maybe my video plan for next week, if you have at all been interested in the Patreon. We currently have a poll going for our next short stories that we're going to read. We've been reading um, Don't Whistle at Night, which has been a very fun and active uh, buddy read in the Discord. And I'm sure we'll have a live show for it in March at some point. Um, but uh, in a couple months, we're going to be reading another short story collection. And right now it's between Lost Pieces, I believe that's the name of it. No, Lost Places. I just looked at my TBR card by Sarah Pinsker and uh, Blood Child and Other Stories by Octavia E. Butler. So both very good science fiction authors. So I'm very excited to see which one wins out. They're both on my TBR cart, so it's a win for me either way. But that's currently the poll that's going up. And I need to make a poll for the TBR that I need to film for next week, presumably. <laughs> but yeah, in general, February's reading is going about as well. As, as I expected between teaching and everything else. I don't know, I'm getting a good groove with teaching. It's just that like, I spend a lot of my time doing that, if that makes sense. All right, um, if you just wanna leave an emoji to let me know you're here. Um, I don't know, last week we released something for the 100,000 Kingdoms. So let's leave either a vampire or a werewolf for a bride. That seems reasonable. And otherwise, um, I mean, you can tell me what you're reading, doing, watching this weekend. But otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.